Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Greek workers observe general strike to protest labor reform proposal. Kyoko Fujimori seeks to annul votes as Pedro Castillo nears election victory. Palestinians protest illegal evictions and settlements in the occupied territories. Keystone XL pipeline officially terminated following over a decade of struggle. Workers across Greece observed a general strike on June 10th to protest a proposed labor reform introduced by the ruling Conservative New Democracy Party. The reform will be voted on in Parliament next week. The legislation will allow employers to extend the workday from 8 hours to 10 hours. Moreover, instead of paid overtime, workers will be compensated with reduced hours or time off. The bill will also increase the legally permanent overtime to 150 hours per year. It also restricts the right to strike by ordering a minimum guaranteed service of 33% by public service providers. The bill will also abolish Sunday holidays in 31 industries. Employers will reportedly no longer be obligated to rehire employees after redundancies as long as they are able to justify it in court. The call to strike was issued by major trade unions including ADEDY, the All Workers Militant Front. Civil servants and workers from sectors including media, healthcare, railways and mining all joined the strike. Public services including tax offices and transport services such as the metro and trams remained closed. Ships also remained docked at the ports. Meanwhile, thousands of people held a protest rally in the city of Athens. Protesters then gathered outside the parliament building. Rallies and marches were also held in other cities, including Thessaloniki and Piraeus. Thursday's general strike followed two national strikes organized by the G and ADEDY in May. Mass rallies were also held in several cities last week. Left-wing candidate Pedro Castillo is poised to become Peru's next president in a landmark electoral victory. As of 9 a.m. local time on June 10th, 99.99% of the votes have been counted. Castillo from the Free Peru Party has won 50.2% of the votes. Far-right candidate Keiko Fujimori from the Popular Force Party has won 49.79%. While the official result is yet to be announced, Castillo has declared victory. Meanwhile, Fujimori has initiated an appeal to annul the results of 802 polling stations alleging irregularities. This will be equivalent to around 200,000 votes. As reported by Kapsachin News, Fujimori's team will target areas in central and south Peru where Castillo has received a large share of votes. The process will cost over 882,000 soles. Fujimori also raised unsubstantiated allegations of systematic fraud and irregularities on Monday. She has now claimed that she will accept the decision reached by the National Jury of Elections and the ONPE. Fujimori supporters also flooded social media asking that the armed forces intervene. The Defense Ministry issued a statement saying that the armed forces were subordinate to constitutional power. Adding further, the ministry reaffirmed its commitment to respect the citizens' will expressed at the polls. Meanwhile, Castillo's supporters have continued to gather outside the party's headquarters in Lima. A mass mobilization is also expected on June 10th to mark his imminent victory. 51-year-old Castillo is a rural teacher and trade unionist. He has expressed support for rewriting the current neoliberal and exclusionary constitution. His platform also includes anti-neoliberal policies such as the nationalization of natural resources and key industries. In the meantime, Castillo has asked his supporters to remain calm and wait for the final announcement. The new president and vice president will take office on July 28th. Palestinians held a demonstration outside a court in Jerusalem on June 10th. They had gathered in solidarity with the Salem, Keith and Abu Nab families from Salwan's Patan al Hawa neighborhood. They are among the seven families who were handed eviction orders in 2020 so that Israeli settlers could take over their homes. The two families filed an appeal at the court on Thursday. However, as reported by Wafa News, the court has postponed the verdict until August. Meanwhile, Israeli forces attacked the protesters, gathered outside and detained at least three people. It at least 87 standing eviction orders have been issued against Palestinian families in Batna al Hawa. Local agency Selvanik reported that Israeli forces stormed houses in the neighborhood later in the day. The Jerusalem municipality has also issued demolition orders to Palestinians in the Al Bastan neighborhood. As per reports, families have been given 21 days to vacate their homes. Palestinians in the occupied West Bank are also fighting against the expansion of illegal Israeli settlements. Israeli settlers have started the construction of an illegal settlement outpost near the town of Bethlehem. This is just days after 
over 100 Palestinians were injured by Israeli forces during a protest in Beata. They were protesting the setting up of mobile homes by Israeli settlers on the Jabal Spey mountain. Israeli forces attacked Palestinians again during a protest in Nablus on June 8th. Here is a video on the illegal settlement expansions and violence against Palestinians in the area. نحن الآن في محافظة نابلس رسالتنا أن العمل الشعبي سيستمر والمسيرات الشعبية ستستمر لإعاقة ومنع تقدم هذه المشاريع الاستعمارية التي تستهدف أراضي شعبنا الفلسطيني وتحديدا في بورة جبل صبيح التي سنسعى بكل ما أتينا مقوة مهما كلف الثمن احتراما وتقديرا لدماء الشهداء التي أريقت على هذه المنطقة والجرحى والأسر الذين ضحوا في هذه المنطقة سنبقى أوفياء لهم ونعاهدهم أن نستمر في مقاماتنا الشعبية بالتعاون مع كل مكونات شعبنا الفلسطيني حتى إزالة هذه البورة عن هذا الجبل Energy has officially terminated the widely opposed Keystone XL pipeline. This is a landmark victory for indigenous communities and activists who have been resisting the project for over a decade. The company announced the decision on June 9th after consulting its partner, the government of Alberta. US President Joe Biden had already revoked the federal permit to build the pipeline in January. Construction on the $9 billion project began in 2020 following years of legal challenges. The 1,210-mile pipeline would have stretched from the Canadian province of Alberta to the U.S. state of Nebraska. It would have transported 830,000 barrels of tar sands oil per day. Activists pointed out that producing this type of oil would emit more greenhouse gases. The sheer amount of oil being transported also increased chances of an environmental disaster. Moreover, its route through Nebraska would cut through the Oklahoma aquifer, the surf's this serves as the groundwater source for millions of people in surrounding areas. Indigenous communities in North and South Dakota also state that the pipeline's route would cross through ancestral lands and sacred sites. Moreover, oil companies tried to justify the project by claiming that it would create thousands of jobs. However, the U.S. State Department estimated that the actual number of permanent jobs created would be close to 50. Activists are now calling for an intensified struggle against other pipeline projects, including Dakota Access, over 100 people were also arrested in Minnesota this week while protesting another Canadian-owned pipeline, the Enbridge Line 3. And this is all we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup for more such stories and videos. Visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.